All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today we are going to be actually I'm going to be learning with you guys about upgrahas in Vedic astrology. These are the shadow grahas like Gulika, Mandi, Chapa, Vyava, Dhuma, etc., etc. And I do not know about these grahas. So I'm like, why don't I bring these guys and actually learn from them with you? Because I've learned it from books, but again, it's a different experience when you learn from somebody who has experienced them. So today we're going to be discussing that. We have Michael Reed, Dr. Jin Pai, Dilip Kumar, Ryan Kersak, and Sunili Johnny Pavar. Thank you. Eve was supposed to come. She's in a session right now. She said she might come. It went over, so we're just going to wait for her. So, Sunili Ji, please, yes. uh, we'll start with you about these upgrahas. So please tell us what are they and how do we use them? See, basically there are nine major planets who are shadow planets. So remaining seven, which are visible and which are mostly counted counted in the Kundali or any chart, we mostly take these planets. Apart from this, in Akash Mandal, there are so many uh, different type of Akash Ganga. I don't know the English word for that. So, uh, so many uh, stars are there and they are making up planets also. And each bigger planet has a smaller planet within it or in uh, around that planet that is called as Upagrahas. These Upagrahas are not visible, means uh, directly you cannot see it. But definitely in our day-to-day -day life, <coughs> It really affects us planet like Doom or a planet like Mandi, which is a Upagraha of Saturn, or you can call it as a Gulip also. Because it is a slow planet, Mandi, uh, in my last session also on D30, I told you Mandi in Hindi is Mand. Mand means slow. So whenever Mandi is placed in any house in the chart, it slows down the uh, significance of that particular bhava or it will slow down the effect or fruits of that particular bhava. Now all these upagrahas, so first if uh, whatever upagraha we have to count, we have to count from first surya. Means we have to see the uh, degrees of sun and then out of that degrees we have to add or subtract certain degrees, kalas and we kalas and then we get the result of Upagrahas. So if we add four Rashi, uh, for, uh, 13 Kala and 20 V Kala into uh, Spashta Sun, uh, means uh, Spashta Surya, then we get the result as a Dhoom. Okay? So after Dhoom, then we have to add uh, or subtract uh, out of the 12 Rashis, then we get the Vyati path. That is a clear Vyati path. Now, this Vyati path is a yoga also. In Panchang, if you see yoga, see there is a Karan, Yoga, Var, Nakshatra. So, in that yoga, this Vyati path yoga is specifically mentioned, and this yoga is not uh, counted as an auspicious yoga, Vyati path. Out of Vyatipat, when we count further, we get Parivesh. After Parivesh, if we count, we get Spashta Indra Chap. Now this Indra Chap is connected with the planet Jupiter. It gives fruit like Jupiter, Indra Chap. But basically all these planets except Dhum and Mandi are not much counted in the Kundali. See, for research people, definitely more than these Upagrahas you will find. Not only this, because in DPHS particular, this only is uh, mentioned. But out of that, you will see Pranapada. So many uh, methods are there to make uh, the uh, proper counting or uh, proper degrees of this uh, nakshatras and planets. Mm -hmm. But originally, you have to see all this. Now, Yamagantak is also one of the Upagraha or you can say Yoga also. Now, I will talk a few lines about Yamagantak. What is Yamagantak? So, it is a Yoga. 
Yamagant is called as Upagraha also and in Panchanga also there is a Yamagant Yog. Yama means Yam, Devuta. Gant means ringing a bell. Whatever bell we are uh, just uh, ringing. Mm -hmm. So whenever Yama is coming, he is coming with the bell in the hand. So beware that Yamaganta Murta is coming. So don't do any auspicious things in this Murta. That is a basic meaning of this. Now, whenever it is a Sunday and Magha Nakshatra is falling on Sunday, that day is a Yama Gantak Yoga. Whenever Monday is there and Vishaka Nakshatra is there, that day is a Yama Gantak Yoga. Same way in Adra Nakshatra, if Tuesday is falling, then that day auspicious things like uh, entering into the new house or making puja of any premises, offices or even if you start any new thing, you have to face small, small uh, difficulties. Not necessary that your work will not fructify, but if you are going, your tire will get puncture only and uh, then you, you will get stuck in the road. Then you have to again uh, see for another uh, cab or something or anything in your routine life. Some uh, yama uh, makes the nuisance or some problems are arise. So this is a yama gantaku. Apart from that, I give much, much importance to mandi. Now mandi, specifically when mandi is placed with surya, because see, surya is the major planet. Surya is the atma. Surya is our soul. So whenever Mandi is placed with Surya, same like Saturn and Surya, how it is not a good combination we call. Mm -hmm. Same way, Mandi and Sun is also not a good combination because this Mandi will deteriorate the fruits of Sun wherever it is placed in. Whenever Mandi is placed with Surya, that natives uh, will that native may not have very good connectivity with his father with his employer or his paperwork may get stuck in the government offices or somewhere or uh, he may not be having a very good name in the society even though he is working so hard or she is working so hard but he is not getting uh, the comfortable food. If Gulika and Mandi conjunct son, is that's, that's what see, is. Uh, Gulika and Mandi is the same thing. Yeah. We can call it as a gulik also. Yeah. We can call it as a mandi also. Because nowhere it is written that gulik is different and mandi is different. I see so, especially uh, certain software gulika and mandi are separate. Actually it is not so but Because uh, for gulika, there is no literature written on gulika. I, I have found in many books, at least I didn't found in proper uh, this Shastra books or whatever translations books I have. I am not finding any uh, material about the Gulika. So I call Mandi as a Gulik only. Gulik is the same uh, like Mandi, Mandi is a Gulik. So Mandi is called good when it is placed in 3rd house, 6th house and 11th house, same like Papa planet. All malefic planets are said to be good in 3rd, 6th and 11th house, like Rahu only. Saturn also is good here, same way. Mandi also gives you very good fruits whenever it is placed in these three houses. But Mandi, if placed in any house, and if that house is a very powerful uh, house or any exalted planet in any uh, house, but, and uh, if you see that uh, uh, this is so uh, uh, very good fruit giving Bhava, this person is not... Uh, rising up in the life, what is the reason? Even though in Ashtakvarga many a times you see that for particular say for example 10th house if person is having Mandi along with exalted uh, this uh, Jupiter mm -hmm. in a cancer sign and if Mandi is there and that person is not rising up in the uh, life or in his profession even though that person will say I am having 7 marks in uh, my Ashtakvarga still I am not getting any re uh, result that time we have to see this mandi. Wherever mandi is placed, so even though you have good marks, good bindus in Ashtakvarga, this mandi will not allow you to take the good force in the chart. Same way, doom. Wherever doom is placed, 
it will deteriorate the fruits or it will burn the fruits of that particular bhav dhum is more dangerous than mandi because dhum acts like a mars dhum acts like a ketu there is a upaketu also yeah dhwaja shikhi we call it as you know so it is connected to ketu but dhum uh, for particularly marital bliss we have to count dhum and whenever we have to see any health issues in native chart that time you you have to see that whether this dhum is affecting the surya or no because directly for any illness or any health issues first we have to see sun in the chart surya kundali we have to put so that time you can definitely see it and apart from that uh, this all other planets upaketu same uh, many people use at least i do not use it very um, very rarely i use this but you so always that's use guma and gulika and mandi for sure yeah for sure every time whenever i see the chart first i see mandi only where the mandi is placed in the chart so, so you said that only slows down the effects of the house doesn't like yes. destroy it no it will not destroy okay you are getting the fruits see in profession house if you are having mandi that time you are working 100% but you are getting only 70% 30% is taken away by mandi oh. for example same way in seventh house if mandi is placed only mandi even though no any planet in seventh house some or other marital uh, issues or some problems will be definitely there if mandi is placed in fifth house in the chart uh, for uh, child birth uh, lady may suffer or if it's placed in male chart that time that person's children will not be having good relations with this mate okay. that is also uh, indicated same way in fourth house also if mandi is placed then lack of mother's bliss you may get your house very late in your life even though you have lots of money but you are not able to purchase the house due to some or other reason so this is because of money if you are doing any property uh, dealing you are buying something at the last moment some issues will come and that deal will uh, not happen so here mandi is playing very important role perfect so for mandi i always suggest that you have to be very karma karak like uh, saturn only you have to do good karmas you do good deeds help the needy people because saturn always loves people working saturn doesn't like uh, leisure life aram se jio saturn doesn't want that okay perfect so this is uh, what about upagrahas okay and no. uh, 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 about uh, pluto herschel and neptune is uranus Neptune and Pluto that is visible. But yeah. previously, when I was learning my astrology, that time we were told in the class that we don't uh, count these planets as these are the upagrahas because they are very far away from uh, the planets which are visible very uh, clearly. But now I am realizing that hundred percent Neptune and Uranus are working. in our chart and we have to consider this planets also wow. uranus wherever placed in the chart neptune wherever placed in the chart it will 100% effect if your uh, venus is placed along with neptune the person will go for love affairs and love marriage many charts i have seen so neptune is a bigger form of uh, moon moon or venus. water venus Neptune is a bigger form of moon. moon. It is water body. Neptune. Okay. We call it as a, a big Chandra, right? Big moon, because it is a, a con- it contains many moons within it. It is full of water. That is why whenever Neptune is very powerful with moon in the chart, that in tenth house, these people are mostly connected with. Uh, Uh, uh marine uh, business or marine activities many a times you will notice this even if you see uranus in uh, 12th house uranus in 7th house 
specifically if in third house seventh house or ninth house and 12th house if you see uranus these people have some or other connection with foreign lands specifically in 12th house if you see uranus you can definitely ask the native whether you have visited any foreign places or whether you have any connection with foreign land so these people go there what is uranus if you if neptune is moon what you what uranus 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 is a herschel we call it a herschel it acts like a saturn also and it acts like a mars also it is a, a you know it is a bomb it is a dead bomb but you never know when it will blast it's like a mine <laughs> yeah. yes all right so whenever so uranus you... is placed in fifth house or uranus is placed in eighth house these people definitely go for research they are very fond of research even aeronautical engineers if you see they are having very good quality of uranus and saturn in their chart wow okay all right sunil ji can i just add something please uh, couple, yeah um, you know when i've i've heard from a few uh, scholars here in india who consider these outer planets connected to certain uh, archetypes for example they say varuna is connected to neptune yeah and neptune is connected to varuna varuna is the you know the god of the cosmic oceans and that's why she was saying you know she it's connected to many moons and all of that so it's all about the ocean and then they say uranus is connected to uh, lord indra you know supremacy dominance uh, you know indra lok so all of those pol- qualities you can see with uh, and then pluto they say is connected to rudra the fierce rudra. of shiva yes rudra. so these are the three things that i have heard from many scholars here yeah. in india but i don't and, know about uh, the, the interpretations yes and pluto uh, pluto specially if uh, you want to see any uh, mundane astrology you have to use pluto in that for mass uh, any natural calamities if you see that time pluto is playing very important role i find if, that uh, i'm sorry to interrupt yeah that so country is a chart shiva. you have to see no, shiva yeah rudra rudra shiva is the destructive rudra yes. yeah rudra is the destructive yeah. right. so so you can see earthquakes calamities happening right when, when pluto is in a chart somewhere what do you see about that what do you what would you say about that in a particular kundali what does that do to that house okay pluto if it is placed with your atma karak planet in the chart and it is connected with your lagna lord also that person will be having nature of blasting all of a sudden mood swings will be there of that native pluto particularly same you will see for uranus also if uranus is placed in lagna or in ascendant these people are having lots of mood swings you know like ketu only it will be effect this uranus but uranus is very uh, uh, I, I, very weird planet actually uranus that is why uranus is not said to be good with venus you know if uh, especially it is placed in scorpio sign mm-hmm. or in fifth house that time some unnatural uh, physical activities we say homosexuality gets increased so that time this uranus plays a uh, very important role but for pluto you can say for mundane astrology definitely you have to uh, see the pluto okay if if it is in eighth house then it is good because uh, pluto also gives lots of research beneath the soil you know beneath the soil okay perfect so ryan yeah what, what? is your opinion on that well um i think it's interesting that we segued into the outer planets here um just for a brief moment um because the outer planets have a similar effect like rahu and ketu uh like the upagrahas because they are what i would consider to be transpersonal planets so they're planets that um show us how we're developing certain aspects of ourselves 
And when I've used the, the Upagrahas, um, typically what I've found is that they give a challenge to the area of life that they're influencing to help us learn and grow. You know, one of the things with um, the Duma group, uh, which is based off of the, uh, the position of the sun, like um, uh, Sunili mentioned. Yeah. Well, the sun is what empowers our life. It's our life force. It's our energy. It's our soul, you know, as we just heard. And those, those little points that the Duma group creates, those can be little weaknesses within, um, within our, our spiritual armor or in our spiritual path where little obstacles are going to come up that we have to overcome and attend to. So when I use the, the Upagrahas, that's typically what I focus, um, what I focus on. However, there are so many Upagrahas and there are so many things that can go wrong within a chart already, just with Saturn, Mars, and Rahu, and Ketu. Um, but I, I tend to not use the Upagraha so much just because, in my mind, it's just smattering the chart with, you know, eight other things or ten other things or thirteen other things that could possibly go wrong for an individual. Yeah. So when I look at these, uh, I do look at Gulika or Mandi, uh, as Sunil was mentioned, and also Duma, because these are the most... Uh, the most influential in regards to where we're going to have something go wrong. However, what's really fascinating is that, you know, if you pull up Brihat Parashar Hora Shastra and you read through uh, the effects of the Duma group, um, there, are, there are only two of them that are really giving a lot of problems to the individuals. Um, the others, they work well. And so, for example, if we take Duma, as we just heard, when Duma is in the third house, uh, the sixth house, the 10th house, and 11th house, just like Saturn and Mars, that gives greater strength, courage, um, and upliftment to that area of life. But let me just share a screen here and see if I can figure out how to do that again. So if we look at, if we look at, where is it here? If we look at the other Upagrahas, such as um, even uh, Vyatipata, what we find is that when we put, um, when we put this, this particular Upagraha, again, in particular houses like the third, we get firm in disposition, warrior, liberal, rich, dear to the king. Sixth house, destroyer of his enemies, physically mighty, skilled in all kinds of weapons. And we keep going, we see Paravesha, which is another one of the Duma group. Well, when Paravesha is in houses, it has a tendency to help out that house. Uh, first house, learned, truthful, peaceful, rich. Fourth house, helpful to enemies, kind, endowed with everything, skilled in singing. So three, if I recall correctly, three of the five um, Upagrahas, when they're in a house, they can actually help that house. However, what we have to remember is that it's all based on how strong the actual chart is itself. And the way I always like to look at that, it's as if, if you're running a business and little problems come up, but you are good at running a business and you know what you're doing, those little problems are just things that you deal with and you move on. But if you're trying to run a business and you're not really a great business person or you're not really trained in that or don't have a lot of skills in that, when these little problems come up, they tend to derail you. So I think one of the things that we have to remember with these Upagrahas is that um, they cause a lot of problems when the chart itself uh, has innate weaknesses in it, such as the Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord, or the Atmakarika. Um, when the Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord, and the Atmakarika are stronger, well, then those negative things by the Upagrahas will tend to be less. Also, we'll find that the positive capacity of the Upagrahas, uh, the other ones that we listed or mentioned there, they will tend to give better results. Now, one final thing I, I do want to say about these is that since there are so many of them, and when you pull up a chart, if you look to see where they are, and let's share this screen again, because I think I've got an example here. Um, share a screen. If you look to see where they are, is it in this one? Yeah. So this is a little small, but this little chart here, um, can everyone see this? Is it coming through okay? I can see it, but I don't think I can understand it. Okay, yeah, I'll just, I'll just tell you what it is because it is a little too small. But this is, this is just a chart that is telling us where the Upagrahas will fall in this Rashi chart right here. So okay. we can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 Upagrahas all falling in, what, 8, eight of all 12 signs there, which means okay. that if we take the idea that each of these Upagrahas is going to cause um, significant problem 
for an individual, then almost every area of life, you know, yeah. uh, two thirds of the area of life is going to have a problem with it. Exactly. Um, but what I do when I'm looking at a chart, because I do like to take them seriously, is I like to look at where are the Upagrahas falling um, with another planet. So in this chart, we've got uh, uh, Vyapti Pata, that's what the little circle is, with the moon here in Virgo, and they're falling within a degree of each other. And when that happens, at least in this chart, we're going to find that this also puts these two planets, Vyapti Pata and the moon, uh, in the same Dasamsha and also in the same Trimsamsha. And when I see that happening, that's when I pay more attention to these, um, these Upagrahas because that's going to tell me that that planet, for better or for worse, is going to have a profound impact on that moon and also the sign Virgo because that's initially where it's coming from. And when that person runs a dasha of the moon, a dasha of Mercury or moon Mercury or Mercury moon, they're going to have the experiences of where this is placed within the birth chart. Um, and the reason I stick with the D10 and the D30 is because these are two Varga charts that specifically focus on activity in the world. Um, what's going to happen? What are you going to be known for? The D10 and the D30 uh, fortunes and misfortunes. And so when you get these Upagrahas with a planet in the same Dasamsha, in the same Trimsamsha, um, you're going to find that there's going to be a greater emphasis on uh, misfortune or fortune, depending on how that Upagraha is affecting that planet. And in this example here, when this person went into their moon Mercury cycle, when they went to their moon Mercury cycle, that is actually when um, they got some breakthroughs within uh, a performing or a singing career. And what's fascinating is when you look at uh, the indications from Briat Parashar Hora Shastra and Vyati Pata in the 11th house, it talks about success with singing. Now, that was the only time this person really had much success with their singing career, even though they kept trying. And the reason that's the case is because we can see that they've got um, Saturn and K2 on the ascendant, which number one is going to make them have a hard time fully expressing themselves. And if you're an artist, if you're a singer, you need to be able to do that. Number two, we see we have the Ascendant Lord Mars going into the eighth house and the 10th Lord Sun also going into the eighth house. So most of their life was um, riddled with struggle in this regard. But believe it or not, when they got to that moon Mercury cycle, when that moon got activated in the 10th with Vyati Pata, all, excuse me, in the 11th, Vyati Pata also in the 11th, them being in the same sign in the D10, also in an angle in the D10, um, this person had greater success with their career. So when I'm looking at these things, I try to take into consideration the entire chart, and I try to specifically look at where are they falling um, within degrees to other planets. And that's, that's when I use these, because otherwise what happens is you get overwhelmed by the fact that you have 13 of these Upagrahas yeah. all causing problems everywhere. So this is my way of kind of zeroing in on how it's going to work. Perfect. Yeah. So Michael, what's your? Well, I have to, I have to say, much like Ryan uh, was saying, I you know myself. I've hardly you know worked with the Upagrahas that much, mainly for that very same reason. I feel we kind of give some context. I'm, I think it's actually good that we brought up Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto because I kind of want to mix that into the conversation too. Um, much like if you're working with Vedic astrology, sure, you can factor in Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. But I find many times you're finding a lot of the same information in the chart using, you know, Rahu and Ketu. And that's really interesting. And I think that that kind of ties into the Upagrahas as well, because they are um, shadowy planets as well. And um, with Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, they're not visible to us. Whereas with everything sun through Saturn, we have a visual, you know, body that we can actually see in the sky. Mm -hmm. But Rahu and Ketu, they have a, um, a physical manifestation that we see through eclipses. Yeah. And so it makes sense that with the other shadowy grahas, they're going to function in a way that's similar to the nodes. In other words, they will bring unexpected things. They will behave in... Uh, very uh, karmic manners within the uh, the horoscope. Uh, but in getting into this, what I have actually found is that a lot of the things with that you can find through the Upagrahas, I'm tending to find through other planets. But uh, when Ryan wrote his article, I actually took a look at this article online, and 
I found a really wonderful case study of somebody that has, just like Ryan was saying, four particular points in their chart that are conjuncting Upagrahas. Okay. And I could share that chart with you. And one of those points is actually coming up, which would be a good segue into talking about Yamakantaka, which was what I really wanted to talk about initially, but got sidetracked into finding uh, other things there. Let me see if I can share this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's bring it back to the screen. Great, so if you look, uh, can everybody see the uh, list of the degrees with the Upagrahas over here? Or is our picture covering it up? If our picture's covering it up, I'll put it in a... No, we can see it. Okay, great. Let me move our pictures for myself so I can see it. Um, if you look at this, you'll notice that Venus over here in uh, Pisces in the third house is conjunct Indradamus. Is that's 414, Venus is 434. Equally, we've got Mars at 25 degrees of Aries in this particular situation. And we've got, if you look, you've got Parivesha mm -hmm. here at the same point. And if you go into uh, Ryan's article, which a lot of the things about the planets in the houses are taken from Brihat Parashwa Hora Shastra, for this native, a lot of these things really... Uh, really hold true in that particular situation. But one particular thing is, you know, if you add things like house cusps into the situation, this person has Yamakantaka conjunct the 10th cusp. And on 27th of August, it's going to transit right over this 10th cusp. Now, Yamakantaka is one of the um, Upagrahas that's said to give primarily really, really good effects. Uh, with the um, with the tenth house, sorry, I'm trying to access the bottom of my screen and it won't let me. There we go. I want to bring up Ryan's article because it's actually a good context for it. It says uh, with the Yamakantaka in the tenth house, it's someone who's versed in religion and law, learned in all shastras, intelligent, artistic, and happy. That's definitely something that is true of this person. This is somebody who's really into all form of religions, is very universal in uh, their association with religions, is also learned in several different world religions, and is always really interested in understanding the universality behind those things. And it's equally somebody who's very artistic. And I wouldn't say they're happy all the time, but they've been happy for you know, a large part of their life. And so with, the, with Jupiter getting ready to transit over this, we can expect to potentially see something very notable going on in this person's career. So I'm going to stay in touch with this person during that time and uh, see what type of uh, information I can find out from the person. Um, but one of the things I kind of wanted to come back to in association with this is I wouldn't want to say it's extraneous. In other words, I wouldn't want to say that these points aren't necessary because they can provide some useful information. But I would say that a lot of the information can tend to be secondary on many levels. And if you're looking at a chart and you're kind of stumped by the chart, I would say that that's generally when I tend to go and look at these factors to see if I'm seeing something that I might have otherwise missed at some other point. Um, but much like the, um, the outer planets, and if there's time left over at the end of our discussion, there's something I want to add about Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which, okay. is, which is pretty interesting. Not at the end of this discussion, but at the, at the okay. end of the whole discussion later on. Um, but with Yamakantaka, it's interesting because it gives primarily good results because it's associated with Jupiter. And similar with Arda Prahara, and you can correct me on my pronunciation. I'm okay with that. Um, they're the two that give very, very positive results. And with the second group, the Kalavelas, they are also actually considered somewhat sons of the planets that they're associated with, such as Yamakantaka being the son of Jupiter, Arda Prahara being uh, connected to Mercury, 
Godanda being connected to uh, Venus, Gulika being connected to Saturn, um, Ritu being connected to Mars, Puridi being connected to the moon. And so they're all going to give results similar to the, uh, to the planet that they're associated with. So you can look at these in the chart as kind of being like a secondary version of the planet. Okay. And when I've noticed with the results that they tend to give, they tend to give results that are somewhat unexpected when something comes into association with them. It's something that can happen out of the blue, much like things that happen with, uh, with Rahu happen, right? Rahu brings a lot of unexpected things. If we're thinking with Rahu that things are going to go one particular way, chances are they're going to go quite the opposite direction. Yeah. K2, as we know, K2 can be very erratic in terms of the things that it produces, right? And so a lot of these um, upagrahas, they tend to function in a very similar way where they tend to make something happen that's very unexpected. Have, has anybody else done any deep work with transits to these points in the chart? Can anybody chime in on that? Mm. No? No. No. I've I've done uh, <clears throat> I've not done deep research, Michael. But a couple of years ago, uh, there was one small study that we did um, looking at um, transit of Saturn with respect to uh, Mandi or Gulika, and then what that's what I was wondering. I'm thinking, yeah. Is, yeah, like sixth house whenever Saturn transits the sixth house or eighth house or twelfth house from Mandi or Gulika, the then the, the meteor goes through a lot of yeah distress. Right. That's one right. of the points that I, I didn't. Right, because in looking at Paladipika and um, other texts that actually have information on the Upagrahas, you'll find a lot of any information that's written in those texts tends to involve associations with the planet with which the Upagraha is connected. Okay. So in other words, the information that you'll see on Yamakantika is associated with Jupiter. As a matter of fact, there's something in Paladipika that connects with a midpoint between, um, I'm not sure if I have it correct, so, so pardon me if it's incorrect, I'd have to pull up the text and I don't think I'd have time to do that. Um, a midpoint between Yamakantika and something else and when Jupiter transits that point in the chart, it's stated that uh, there can be death to the individual's father. Does anybody, has anybody read that particular stanza of the text? I'd have to like really search through the text. So I don't, <laughs> I just thought I'd see if anybody really knew. No. But, and so that got me to thinking, you know, about transits to these particular points and what little research I found in association with that, I found to be substantiated. But most especially what I have found is that, for instance, um, with this individual's chart, with Mars in the fourth and with it close to Paravesha, then during Mars Dasha, there were the effects of Paravesha in the, um, in the fourth, which going back to Ryan's article, because it has the uh, text from Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra that relates to it. Uh, let's go here. We can't see anything what the what you're trying to share. You cannot see no. the browser. Can anybody else see the browser? No. That's odd. Let me stop sharing and share again. Because it's showing on my screen. Oh, that's why. My apologies. It was my apology on my end. There we go. My bad. It says with uh, Paribesha in the fourth, wonderstruck, helpful to enemies as well, kind, endowed with everything, and skillful in singing. I've never known of the individual being skillful in singing, but the other things definitely uh, tend to hold true for the individual. And especially during Mars Dasha, a lot of those things came into being with the individual's life. The individual had um, a lot of petty squabbles with people, right? But they didn't really hold it in any way personal with the individual. As a matter of fact, they were always willing to help those people who were angry at them and considered those people their friends. Mm -hmm. So definitely, you know, within the dashes of these planets, I have found them to yield some 
um, very powerful results, but most especially as Ryan was saying, when you have a close conjunction with the planet, with the planet in that house. If that planet is by itself in that Rashi, then I have found it to not really be quite as notable, but when it's with another planet and you're actually in the Dasha of that planet or you're in the Dasha of the Rashi, that the Upagraha Zen, you tend to get some very powerful results in association with it. So those are the main things I've noticed about the Upagrahas and what little bit of work I've done with them. So, Mr. Dilip Komarji, what is your thoughts on? Am I audible? Yes. So the credit goes to you for uh, bringing us all into this discussion about the less, uh, you know, used items in astrology. Yeah. I always used to think uh, that we had, if we had more uh, people into the horoscope, it, it might get very confusing. Yeah, and uh, I used to think about the these grahas as you know, even if the, if there is an empty space in the horoscope, maybe there's somebody occupying it. Like if you see in some, you know, in in uh, some ghost movies, they will show you that uh, suddenly you can see some ghosts in the room. Yeah, they're always there all the time, and they were affecting the room, you know, according to the story. But it's not visible to people. And so I think the Upagrahas might be something like that. Always there. So even if people say, you know, my fifth house is empty, there's nobody there. We normally say maybe you'll have to look at the fifth lot and yeah. then give predictions or who's with the fifth lot or something like that. But maybe the Upagrahas can give us some clues. But as we went through the, uh, you know, go through the, um, the effects of all these uh, Grahas, uh, one by one and see what it carries. There are a lot of uh, information about uh, something that happens to the person, but we don't know how to relate it to a particular uh, time period because normally, uh, you know, the Dasha systems are connected to the the regular planets that we use. Mm -hmm. Even though Rahu and Ketu are called Chaya Grahas, we still have uh, a planetary period allotted to them. But then on top of that, we, we are also told that Rahu can become something else based on uh, the sign it is placed in or you know some other connections. All that we know. But uh, if, you, if you look at any standard uh, result from these grahas, I actually did a lot of uh, research on you know celebrity horoscopes, people whom we know very well. And uh, many of the upagrahas didn't match unless Unless we we did not know the whole thing about the celebrities. Yeah, unless we are missing yeah. their personal yeah. life. That's yeah, personal that. life or whatever they did, we are not very sure about it. Yeah. If you do a research on, uh, you know, Mother Teresa's horoscope, you find that she's very wicked and that, you know, those kind of uh, statements come up in the research if you do with Upagrahas. So we really don't know how to use this. And uh, it's not giving any standard, uh, you know, methodologies like we know that, uh, you know, Rahu uh, and Ketu usually uh, is good in 3, 6, 10, and 11, the Upachayasthana. But even uh, 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 earlier on, I think, uh, Sunilji and uh, uh, Ryan, everybody, they, they all mentioned the, the effect of these planets. Uh, like if you say Duma, it's good in 3, 6, 10, and 11, but suddenly Marshi Parashara has included 9 in it. So we really don't know what, why he exempted 5 but included 9. Because in the ninth, he says the person will be blessed with sons and fortunes, be wealthy, honorable, kind, and uh, the regular stuff that is connected to the fifth, uh, ninth house. And what about the fifth house? So we have some kind of uh, not very sure whether the the uh, the translations have been done well or we have. Um, I mean, we really got the text from Mahesh Parashar, or it was later, you know, uh, included in these texts by some other uh, authors uh, claiming it was uh, part of uh, you know the basic uh, parashara text or maybe it is the way it is and maybe it's also true that maybe uh, we don't have we can't find a pattern uh, say for example in vyatipata we are told that 3 6 9 10 and 11 they're all good again he includes 9 there and uh, then for paridi uh, 
we get almost all the houses good except a few we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 8 9 10 11 they're all good so we we can't really place them into you know we don't know which group uh, or which logic we should use uh, for them so it it means that you will have to either memorize the whole thing or always constantly look through the books uh, we can't use the normal method of okay i know the basic rules so even without a book i can uh, you know read out the results mm -hmm. and uh, most clients would be more interested in uh, when it is going to happen and uh, that that will be usually the questions but they they wouldn't you know they wouldn't like if you tell them their characters like uh, these are your uh, you know habits they're not very keen about that they want to know when what will happen so there must be a definite, uh, you know, process of relating this to uh, time, any timing, uh, you know, ideas. Like transits, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, transit or or that, uh, Ryan or Michael. Group. Yeah, I said maybe we can use it like if, uh, if uh, you know, Mandi is with Saturn and we already know that Saturn is uh, amongst the, uh, you know, uh, death inflicting planets ma, you know the sun always gets the uh, saturn always gets the upper hand over other planets uh, when it becomes a nominee planet for marakatvam then uh, maybe if mandi also joins it then the marakatvam is almost confirmed so we can sort of use it like uh, like what uh, even Ma um, michael was telling uh, Re sorry reed was telling that uh, we take it like uh, uh, you know a reflection of the same planet that is associated with all this, but I think uh, it's too early for us to, you know, confirm because I've studied at least 50 horoscopes, and uh, I could not get a definite picture about uh, the person using only the, uh, the you know, the non-luminous planets and the other planets put together. So that was a reason. And uh, one approach I liked about uh, Ryan's work was that maybe if all of them are together in one place, maybe then it is trying to tell something. Uh, maybe you can use that idea. So mm -hmm. as I went through the uh, various options, uh, you know, even um, uh, Shiki, uh, you find that one, two, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, they're all good. So th this goes on. And then on top of that, we have this confusion like uh, what uh, Sunilji said was uh, Mandi and Gulika are the same. Uh, but uh, some te some text uh, books says it is there are two different things. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, Suniliji is right because uh, they are one and the same for the simple reason that uh, in the reading you only find uh, the explanations given for Gulika and not for Mandi. So, mm -hmm. or uh, if you use uh, just one minute, um, I'll share the screen. I don't know what is. Uh, can you see this? Yeah. So what I've done here is uh, uh, I've kept sun intentionally at zero, zero, zero. Here. You can see here where my mouse is. Yeah. The sun uh, DK zero, 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 zero. This happens uh, during the you know the, the new year, and I kept it intentionally at zero, so you get an understanding about uh, where all the other uh, grahas are. For example, if you take uh, Duma which is here, it is exactly uh, 120 degrees plus 1320. So it is here. It is over here in this place, Duma. And uh, again, you use the other logic that if you subtract from 180, you get this. And you keep doing all this. This Everything is related to just one graha, which is uh, sun. So the rule that if these grahas are uh, connected to the sun doesn't hold good because Wherever the sun is, it will always be stationed in the same place in every chart. So maybe there was a trans uh, translation error in that, that if grahas are connected to the sun, then uh, there is the Vamsnash, uh, you know, idea. Maybe the other things with connection to Lagna, it, it is possible. Mm. Uh, or uh, with the moon, it's possible because it's not connected to the moon or the Lagna, this formula at least. And if you look at uh, the options you have here, uh, once again, uh, where is it? Uh, you have uh, one minute. Where have I missed it? Um, uh, 
are here, Mandi and Gulika. You see this, uh, just to prove the point that they're both one and the same. You see, Mandi is at 25 degrees Capricorn. Yeah. And Gulika is at 13 degrees Capricorn. So if you see in every chart, they'll always be close to each other. And in the same way, they'll be close to each other. But then they can also cross into two different houses. Let's say. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, because later, water. one will be in a previous house. Yeah, but, uh, but but the fact is that they always are in this fashion that Mandi is ahead of Gulika by, and it will be most probably the same sign or the adjacent sign. Okay. So uh, that, that means that there was some translation error in uh, the, the ideas given for calculating uh, Mandi and Gulika, which has led to this controversy. And what, if you see in Jagannatha Hora, if you go to preferences, and I'm just clicking on that, related to calculations, you have this Upagraha calculations options here. And if you click that, you see here, Gulika rises at the beginning or the middle. Suppose I, I, I change these settings into, let's say, uh, both of them beginning. Uh, okay, let's change the whole thing to beginning and then say, okay. So we get a different, can you see this? Mandi and Gulika are now the same? Same, yeah. So uh, the, 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 there is uh, this confusion going on because we, we know, uh, you know, uh, if, if uh, we read them separately, then we will get two results. But if they, we read it as one and this Prashna Marga, um, this particular point, let's say that they're one and the same, Guliga and Mandi, in Prashna Marga, they've been used extensively to find uh, the actual source of uh, what is troubling the uh, the, yes. the, the one who questions. Very true. In, yeah. In, in that, if we have confusions about, you know, we don't know how to calculate uh, this. So the, the, the reason for all this confusion is um, a part uh, a part of a day or what we call the, the length of the day, uh, the what they call the dinamana or uh, the night time, which is the length of the night, Ratri mana, that is divided into uh, parts like how we do it for Raukala. So eight parts, and there are some logics for this, and uh, there's so much of mathematics involved in this. Uh, that's why you know people don't like it; they like it only with the computer software. Yeah. But in the software that I think Michael Reed showed, uh, it showed two different. Uh, you know, Mandi and Gulika were shown uh, separately. Yeah. But uh, if if you change the settings uh, on how it is calculated, it will it will reveal itself as one and the same. Okay. The thing is, is there's a lot of different ways. Yeah. There is a lot of confusion out there about how it's all calculated. Yeah. How it is calculated. Yeah. yeah. So, then, so, uh, yeah. so in books like Sarvarta Chintamani, where it lists Gulika and Mandi like at different spots, is that just the idea that they're just using the same name for the same, or two different names for the same thing? Or um, any thoughts on that? Uh, I, no, I, 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 because of the calculation mm. leading to almost the same point, I think that they are one and the same. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that... and uh, uh, particularly when you uh, again, I will come to Murtas. When you see Rahu Kal, that time you see Gulik Kal also. You don't see Mandi Kal. You know, specifically Gulik Kal is uh, mentioned that yeah. in this particular time you should not perform certain activities. Like we see Rahu Kal also. But actually, it is one and the same. And what you talked about, eighth part of the Saturn. When it yep. is in eighth part, Ashtamanj, that time it is, uh, 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 I think uh, it is connected to Mandi only, that eighth yep. part. But but the, a part is this long, and if you want to find the longitude, uh, there are different rules. We don't know where to start, whether it is at the starting mm -hmm. or the ending or in the middle. So that's why yeah. the software gives you these kind of options. But if you have to do a research, uh, we we'll have to first, uh, you know, uh, sort of finalize and get to a common idea than how it's all calculated, because uh, this is going to increase the, you know, the confusion that is already there with the. Uh, yeah. It's 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 like that with you know Jay Meany too. Nobody agrees on what Jay Meany is saying. In a similar way with you know the Upagrahas, there are so many different calculations yeah. for it, and there's bound to be. And the thing Confusion. is, we're so you know? much classical text 
they say like 30,000 pages of classical astrological text is still missing or mm. destroyed. So they could have had a complete separate book by Parashra on Upgrahas only. What they do, why use them, when use them. But it's just, it's gone through time and it's probably was supposed to due to Kalyug. So hopefully start, slowly it'll come back now, now that we're going into the other Drap Yug. But Dr. Arjun Pai, what is your connection with these? And I also want to know the nakshatra placement of, you know, some of these Upgrahas. How can that yeah. be? Out? So, um, Kapil, I think, you know, most of the, the panelists today have covered whatever I had to talk about. Yeah. I know very little about Upagrahas. Uh, I've never used them in any, any okay. uh, when I read charts or anything. There has been uh, uh, some work, very little work I did a couple of years ago. Um, and then I can share some of the, the things that I have done with this. But let me tell you what these, uh, <clears throat> what is my interpretation of these Upagrahas? Or what we call them as uh, long, non-luminous, uh, you know, planets or shadow planets. They basically are nothing but they are devoid of uh, the splendor. They are also called as the the kind of give you confinement. Uh, they kind of make you a prisoner. That's what some of the texts mention. But uh, my interpretation of these upagrahas, as uh, Dilip Kumar sir said, and I agree with him. Uh, they can be connected somewhere to particle physics. These are essentially just symbolic points determined by some mathematical conventions and there is no astronomical basis for these points. Uh, uh, but however, um, you know, one has to know that uh, when you consider the two other shadow planets, which is uh, Rahu and Ketu, we say they always move in retrograde motion. But all the other Upagrahas, they say there's no motion for them, but they are existing. It's as though they are these ghost figures, which are there, like Dilip Kumar sir mentioned. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, these are small particles which directly have an impact on us, um, just because there are no scientific instruments which can actually measure them, because they don't have mass, they're very small, they're tiny. So human beings cannot see them, cannot hear them, we cannot smell, we cannot do anything. But we still, you know, science is still trying to prove to us about, um, you know, the bosom, uh, the God particle that we're talking about. Yes, yeah. that's, that's coming up. There's so many unknown factors that have an influence on us. And I believe these Upagra has nothing but these uh, unknown factors that have an influence on our lives. And that's when uh, <clears throat> this adds another layer to an astrological uh, or an astrologer, because certain times when he starts reading a chart, he can look at the chart, he can look at everything, but he will still not be able to make a, a good uh, analysis yeah. because certain things are still very hidden from us. And um, as per mythology, they say Gulika, and some of them text say even Mandi. You know, Mandi and Gulika, they were called the sons of Shani. And mythology says, uh, you know, one of the folklore says it is, um, it is Ravana had captivated all the grahas or all the planets and he had asked them to stand in a particular position when his son Indrajit or Meghnath was being born. So he wanted to ensure that this guy will be invincible and he'll be, you know, he'll be immortal or whatever. He wanted to make him the most powerful. So he instructed all of those grahas, he captivated them and made them stand in a particular position based on astronomical uh, to make his chart very strong. But what happened is Shani, it believes his drasti used to fall on the, the next house, usually. Drasti is his eyesight. So wherever Shani is standing, the second house from where his drasti will fall, or his eyesight. And because of that, uh, apparently, you know, they say Ravana came and uh, kicked him or, you know, knocked his leg off and uh, he started limping from that. But one part of that thing, piece fell in the 12th house from where he was standing. And that is the call as Gulika or Mandi. You know, there are many, um, many such folklores. Some of the folklores in Tamil Nadu and the southern parts of India, they also say uh, Ravan, the, the titan king of Lanka, he used to keep Gulika under his uh, throne and sit over it. Because he was said that if he lets go of Gulika, then he would be defeated. 
So Gulika always used to be, he, he used to keep it under his uh, throat, you know, suppressed. That's what, that's how he could rule. So there are many such stories, but let's go to the classic texts. And as Michael mentioned, um, one of the most popular texts which talks very extensively about uh, these Upagrahas is uh, Mantreshwara in Faladipika. You know, in the 25th uh, chapter, he talks about these different agents of uh, pain and, you know, he says transformation as well. Now, what is uh, Mandi? Mandi, the literal meaning is, is an agent of laziness or slowness or tardiness. So he means the same. That's why he's called Mandi. And what is Ardha Prahar? Ardha Prahar means a half knock or a half hit or a half kick. So it is not a full kick. It's a half kick. Ardha, Ardha means half. Prahar means, you know, kick or knocking or striking. Then you have Duma. Duma is nothing but means smoky. So <clears throat> whenever you have Duma, it can create a smokiness. It can create a few, uh, you know, fumes. So it can create a, a vapor which actually clogs your vision. So that's why Duma can give you illusions. That's what some of them mention. Then uh, we have uh, Vyatipata. Vyatipata is nothing but it says it's great calamity or it is uh, disrespect or contempt. So that is what Vyatipata is. And then we have uh, Paridhi, you know, Paridhi or Paridesha, whatever we call them. That is nothing but in Sanskrit, uh, Paridhi means it is a kind of a fence or it is a circumference of a circle, right? In certain, in, in previous times, one of the punishments given to people where they used to tie them around a tree and then whip them. So that is the sort of torture that you feel, which which gives you an inability to move from a position. You know, you would have so much of uh, things coming and you become victimized. It's like a, a sacrificial victim who's tied to a tree and he's whipped. So that is the sort of uh, feeling you get whenever you, you have this paridhi. Uh, then you have Indra Dhanush. Indra Dhanush means the rainbow, you know. And then Upaketu, as I say, you know, um, I think uh, Suniliji has already mentioned that it's called as Dvajashiki. Dvajashiki is nothing but the same like Ketu. It gives the same influence of a Ketu. You know, it's like an asteroid. Upaketu is like an asteroid. So it could also mean that, you know, um, astro uh, astrologically, many of these points could also be sightings of these meteoroids or asteroids when these things happen. That's when, you know, people could uh, look at certain influences in the chart. Now, let me talk about a little bit about uh, the nakshatra aspect of it. Now, <clears throat> one has to remember that there are different uh, nakshatras that you have to consider. One is, of course, the most important is Janma nakshatra. Then the 10th nakshatra from your Janma nakshatra is called as Karma nakshatra. Okay? Janma nakshatra meaning from the so moon or the ascendant? Moon, moon. Moon, okay. We generally, we take... Janma nakshatra is the moon. Okay. Okay. Not as a not as the ascendant or the lagna. So this is all the classes mentioned about the moon. But I I can say you can probably use the same thing with the lagna as well. Okay. Depends. But when I say janma, it was always from uh, you know yeah, Indian astrological. Um, uh, it is always the moon. So karma. So whenever they say when karma nakshatra, there is uh, say let us say the tenth nakshatra from your moon there is an upagraha, right? And then there is a, a transit also activating it, a malefic transit activating that point. Then they say it can give um, a lot of trouble and also death-like situation. Death-like situation, you know? It can give you danger to your body. That's when it's going through, sorry, your janma nakshatra. When your janma nakshatra has a upag, upag, upagraha and then some malefics, are passing through it, it can give you a death-like situation. When it's going through uh, Karma Nakshatra, which is the 10th Nakshatra, it can give you quarrels, it can give you court cases, right? Then the then you go to the, the 19th Nakshatra, from the Janma Nakshatra, it's called Adhana Nakshatra. So whenever it goes to Adhana, it says it can give you foreign residences. The 19th Nakshatra from the Janma Nakshatra. Okay, then you have the Vinash Nakshatra, which is uh, or San, uh, Sangatika Nakshatra, which is the 16th. So similarly, they say when it's going, going through San, Sangatika Nakshatra, it can give you losses. Then you have the 18th Nakshatra. Okay, 
which is called samudhayak nakshatra or udaya nakshatra so they say that is the 18th nakshatra from the janma nakshatra so uh, some of the classics mention that when malefics are influencing or if there is veda veda means uh, aspect of some malefics in transit happening to some of that it can cause some inauspicious results okay then you have jati nakshatra or manas nakshatra so um, from you know whenever um, whenever from the janma nakshatra which is your moon the 25th nakshatra is called jati nakshatra or manas nakshatra the 25th so when when uh, when you have upagrahas in the 25th nakshatra from your moon and there are some malefics triggering it then they say it can give you a destruction of a tribe complete you know annihilation of a tribe so that so these are different different you know combinations which are mentioned related to upagrahas and nakshatras there is also desha nakshatra which is 26 nakshatra from a janma nakshatra is called desha nakshatra desha means country so what they say is uh, it can bring destruction of a kingdom so maybe you know if you have been ruled by somebody who, who is a politician um, is a president of a country and then <clears throat> if his 26th nakshatra as a upagraha and if some malefic transits are happening through that you know the country may go to war and they might bring destruction of his own kingdom what did you mean by you tribe a, when you said 25th nakshatra tribe yeah, tribe is tribe, tribe yeah when you say tribe in the ancient times is uh, you know the, the the family family okay yeah like khandan or something it is yeah khandan you know a big big many families together to yeah. form a tribe so okay. it could be you know a small village or something where you know because of forest fire the entire village was burned down let us say you know the forest fire happened and then the village there were about uh, you know 20 families were leaving there and all their houses got burned down so that is that is the impact of upagrahas on okay. nakshatras that's your uh, jati nakshatra jati means your uh, your culture your heritage and then finally you have the 27th nakshatra from your janma nakshatra is called raja abhishek nakshatra okay or abhishek nakshatra so they say usually when <clears throat> there is an upagraha and there is some malefics uh, going through it or aspecting it it can bring bondage of the king or bondage of the politician or somebody who is primary like the chief of the tribe or somebody like that so somebody who is coronated there would be bondage of him either he is captivated by uh, the enemies or you know things to like that so these are some of the um, you know in, with related to nakshatras that have been mentioned uh, in some classics and upagrahas although i can say i have not tested them on any of the charts i just wanted to share that you know some of these and one more research i was sharing with michael is also to look at gulika and also to look at dispositors of these upagrahas and whenever they say if you are running through the mahadashas or antardashas of the dispositors of the uh, upagrahas can also uh, give you uh, sometimes uh, you know troubles but sometimes it can give you ratio some of the classics also mention when they are there in the trikona what was that that was a ghost <laughs> yeah I saw her upagraha. Yeah, Who was coming was, right on the screen? That was a spider crawling over my oh, camera. Oh my god! I'm like, <laughs> he got ghosts right up in his room. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay. I thought it was behind you. I'm like, oh man! And then he came right on the screen. That There is a Saturn effect. Saturn effect. <laughs> <laughs> But that is a good, a good omen, huh? You will get some money. <laughs> I was I was sitting wow. and I was watching and I was going is it going to crawl right over the lens and sure enough I didn't see it crawl over the lens I saw the picture and going what's <laughs> oh, it going right over oh, the lens that was like that that, <laughs> that, that, that likes Michael Reed a lot I think I know oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good omen actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow so guys um thank you so much for coming and giving this information which has literally never been discussed in this type of a detail 
can, can, can I add something before we part yeah. ways? Because I wanted to add something that Sunili was uh, talking about in regards to the outer planets. You can really, really understand so much about world trends. Yeah. By looking at the outer planets, transpersonal planets, because they kind of denote what's happening yeah. collectively on a lot of levels, and especially the nakshatras. Okay. I would say, you know, from looking at this, the world is in for some really powerful, positive, ultimately, changes over the course of the next 10, 15 years. You sound like a Western astrologer now. Well, just from the nakshatras that are there, it's just really, really, really powerful because of Pluto and Neptune, the interaction between Pluto and Neptune. Absolutely phenomenal. Wow. Mark, mark from like 2007 on until now and think about what has transpired since then, this, especially December 2007. Mm -hmm. and what nakshatra are they going to now? Um, right now, we're using, because I, I know I use different nakshatra calculations than some of you. Basically, we've got Pluto in Uttara Ashada and Neptune in Purva Bhadrapada. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what really kicked this off is in 2007, you had Pluto and Jupiter conjuncting the galactic center. Like Mula, it was just really, really powerful shifts for like kind of set it all into motion. Yeah. And it's been going on since then. But you can really, it's, you're, I completely concur. You can understand so much of what's happening with humanity by looking at the outer planets. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it doesn't need to be a Western thing. And it doesn't need yeah, to be just, a Vedic thing. It's I, I know. It's, it's just a, exactly. It's I do too. Something but, but they're, is something great. That's what they always say, which does exactly. not. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's, a, it's interesting. Something I've noticed is, you know, you tend to get a lot of Pluto-like effects from Rahu. You tend to get a lot of Uranus-like effects from Ketu. And Neptune tends to give a little bit of both. I thought like Neptune, they say, is more of like the LSD self of the Venus. It, it can be like that. Yeah. 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 Most definitely. It's, it's, the, high, it's the higher version of that. But no, most books have said uh, Neptune and Venus are linked. Yeah. That's why I was telling Sanidiji that I've read a lot about Neptune yeah. and Venus being linked. But, you know, it's interesting. For a while, Neptune was uh, transiting Shatabishak and it was like exceptionally powerful. You know, because that's that's Varuna's nakshatra, you see. Mm -hmm. I think that Great, it's a, yeah. uh, that gives uh, uh, terrific intuition. You know, Neptune yeah. is the particular planet for intuition power. You have to see the Neptune position. If you have your Neptune in your ninth house, in your twelfth house, or along with your twelfth lord, if you have Neptune that person will be having very good intuition power, not necessarily that person should be in astrology only. Right. Wherever yeah. that person is working, he knows the things beforehand, you know, that yeah. something is going to happen or something. That is why in magician's chart, you will see that this Neptune is connected with sixth house. Hmm. In magician's chart, they do all magic like, thing and like, all like that. Like right? magician or like a black magician or something? No, magician. Black Bye. magic, then again, you have to see Rahu also. Okay, okay. magicians, okay. Oh. And so for spy like also. Neptune being in like fifth house. For what? Ninth house, instead of ninth, if it's in the fifth. What? Neptune. For magician, you are asking? No, no, just in general. Neptune. Ah, if, huh, if Neptune is in the fifth house, I, I have mostly seen that Neptune really uh, acts like a moon. Because if Neptune, Moon and Venus are together, that person have tremendous good voice quality. You know, in Lata Mangeshkar chart, if you see, Neptune is connected with Moon in her uh, third house. Okay. That is why she has, and Neptune, uh, you know, Neptune gives such a, in Kishore Kumar's chart also, it is in third house. Because he was a great singer. Whenever you listen to... Uh, Listen their songs, na. Oh, Madhosh means uh, you become so uh, involved in those uh, lines or in those voice. 
that uh, you feel like uh, you don't want to listen to anything else yeah. now you feel soothed you know soothing effect is there that, that, that is because of neptune Right. I, I think the confusion with Neptune and Venus is that Venus, we have this idea that Venus is supposed to make you feel so comfortable and yeah. loved and it gets into fantasy a bit. And that's where that overlap comes. But with the moon, that's where real contentment comes from, where you can just settle into that nice, quiet space. So they're a little hard to, to delineate because they have similar influences, but I tend to think of... I Neptune. think Venus is more like having wine and cheese and, you know, nice cookies at a, in front of a beach. Well, there's a lot of noise. Where that's, most people more like you're sitting in a room like this and you're watching the views with a closed window. Piece. But I think that I think that's sort of the issue because people will also also say things like, "Well, that person has a strong Mars because they're aggressive and they're yeah. macho and they're intense." When that's not a strong Mars, that's a Mars that's overcompensating. Right. Yeah. yeah. So with Venus, it's the same thing. Yeah, Venus likes fine things, but when you are kind of clear inside. Fine things would be like enjoying, like what you're just describing, enjoying a peaceful place. You don't need the cookies or yeah. the wine. You see what I mean? It's, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I just looked up a chart of a, of a magician. <laughs> only, only it was, only it's Neptune in the third, too. Oh, interesting. Wow. And it's interesting, Neptune in the third in Ashwini. And it's a, it's a magician who did a lot with, with breath control, you know, so prana, controlling the prana, Ashwini, prana. Um, with K2 in Swati in the chart. It's Harry Houdini. Hmm. Oh, okay. If anybody's heard of Harry Houdini, he yeah, had Neptune in the, of course. Neptune course. in the third. Yeah. 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 Perfect. And uh, maybe, maybe a couple, you know, whenever you mentioned about uh, Neptune in the, the fifth house, I never studied the outer planets, but what gave me a sense uh, from Ryan and Suniji's discussion is, is I feel Neptune is more like um, a combination of Venus and Moon together. Because yes. uh, why why I say that is um, you have to know Varuna and his qualities. You know Varuna water. had his spouse, yeah, water, and Varuna's wife was called Varuni, and she made a potion intoxicant called Varuni Sura. Varuni Sura, it's an intoxicant. So it's about merry making, but also it is all about you know uh, Varuna's qualities of he, he ensures that people follow the the laws the cosmic loss the Varuna hmm. you know and Varuna is not only about um, he's also kind of a, like a, a spy thing because he, they say he, he has got you know 100 stars you know yeah. so Varuna is like he has got 1000 eyes or 100 eyes and he's keeping a watch on all of us hmm. so you can find that you know maybe the children of such people you know fifth house is also a Kuru Punya it's also activating your children the children might be under the watchful eyes of you know like 100 people or you know too many people trying to keep a watch on the children okay you know could, could if you understand the themes of varuna maybe you can start applying them on you know this is just a suggestion i'm not saying yeah, that you know yeah. that's going to play out but that is what people say pluto is like rudra uh, and uh, uranus is like indra that's what so kind of the thing, like brahma vishnu mahesh like yes. 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 and pluto so yeah. Sense from that. Great. So thank you so much, guys, for giving oh, thanks, this Kapil. information for the masses again. Like one, I said, there's no information discussed. Like one, one, one question to Mr. Ryan. What is spiritual gangster? One of my astrological one, apprenticeships yeah. is to me for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what no, What's that? What do you have to do to it's get in? It. I'm not sure what you have to do to get it. It just arrived in the mail like one beat day. Up or do you have to like <laughs> get initiated? No, it's just a very comfortable shirt. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think he definitely must be having a very strong Uranus because yes, spiritual uh, gangster. Spiritual yeah. gangster. Yeah, that's it. What was it, Mr. Kumar? I didn't catch that last part. I was thinking, you know, it's as confusing as Upagrahas. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, what it, what it means is if you contact Ryan, right, he'll contact Rahu and he'll go, Rahu, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.